welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and as always, I have a very special guest for you, Ms. Allie Gilbo, who's the founder and CEO of Fitness Dance Fitness. She'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And like I said, I have a very special guest for you, Ms. Ali Gilbo. Hi. Welcome to the program. Uh, thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Well, it's great to have someone like you in the hot seat tonight. You know, you're Caribbean, you're representing dance and the culture. We're going to go all into that, but it, it's great to have you. Thank you. So before we get started, I always like to like, kind of set the tone. So... Who is Ali Gilbo? Wow. Big question. Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, well, Ali, myself, um, I am a Haitian American. Uh, my parents are from Haiti. I've been dancing since. I was three, whining. I will never forget when my cousin Farah told me how to whine. I'm pretty much just someone that I just love encouraging people, motivating people, and I love to have fun, spread love, positive energy, and um, that's it. So how did this all get started for you? So you said that the dance started off as, as a love that you had when you were about three. Mm -hmm. um, and anyone who grows up in a Caribbean home, especially certain islands like Haiti and Trinidad and these islands, our music is like there's compa, soca, which I find compa and soca go hand in hand. Like mm -hmm. they really are like the cousins yes. musically and, and they vibe really well. From a young age, you know, dance is a big part of our culture. Mm -hmm. So when did you decide that you wanted to take this to another level? Well, I've actually been teaching choreography since I was in elementary school. So that's a, that's been me since day one. Um, incorporating it into fitness really came later into my mid-20s when I realized how much dancing at parties was such a great workout. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to find a way to bring Caribbean culture and fun and that party atmosphere into fitness and get people moving. That is great. So then fitness. Yes. Dance fitness. So of course, you know, when you go into the FET, because we live all saying that, mm -hmm. you know, that's such a big part of what we do. We see that here in, you know, Labor Day time, all those different things. And there's so many different brands that have been popping up doing mm -hmm. their thing. What would you say sets you apart? Wow. Well, fitness is truly a FET and a fitness combination. Um, we incorporate all different types of aspects, fitness dance moves, conditioning moves. We also have a fun, free aspect of doing our Soul Train line in class. Mm -hmm. I really want people to be able to celebrate their life and celebrate them willing to be in an atmosphere to work out and just let loose, release their stress. And I feel like if you come to fitness, you'll know that you belong, you will feel welcome, and you'll get a great sweat in, and you will leave feeling like you just left a bashment party and that's I love it. <laughs> yeah that's really my goal and that's what fitness is all about how has the response been when you first take it back to mm -hmm. maybe your first class okay and you had maybe a handful of people and you slowly watched it grow compared mm -hmm. your first class to one of your most recent how has that changed and evolved for you okay well it's actually interesting my very first class I didn't announce uh, that it was fitness. I had an opportunity to substitute a dance fitness class with pretty much no rules. So I said, okay, I realized that I had a one hour of my fitness routines already made, didn't really tell anyone. So I invited some friends and that crowd was also new people. So, um, and I just taught fitness and, every, and I just wanted their unsolicited opinions. And after class, it was amazing positive feedback they were like what was that like that was so different what was that and I told them I said well this was fitness that's my baby that I'm kind of afraid to launch and they said no like it's time to launch do it and I decided two weeks later to launch it and um my very first class actually was packed um I had about like 20 25 girls and it's a very nice number. It it was amazing. And um, I actually launched that very first official class on the 20th anniversary of my mom passing. So it was meaningful to me. 
and I received amazing feedback. Even like during like during the songs, mm-hmm. you know, during the routines, like people were like, "Yeah!" Like screaming excitement, like "Yes!" Yeah, like "Oh my gosh!" Right. And um, so it it was amazing. And even now, I still receive that same um, amazing feedback, positive feedback. You know, social media reviews or comments, conversations after class. So I feel very blessed to still have that same momentum going from the first class even to now. That's great. Um, how do you curate the playlist and the moves together? Like, I know as new st- songs come out, you're going to want to freshen it up. But mm-hmm. how do you personally, because I know you hand select everything. Yes. So how do you know or choose ultimately which things make the cut? So my process is a little different so my favorite place to listen to music and decide is in the car okay so just that bass is being able to like blast it and just really just let the music surround me Mm -hmm. um i love doing that in the car so pretty much i'll listen to a song and my body just wants to move so if Mm -hmm. my body wants to move to that song i put it on a list i put it into a separate playlist my personal playlist like okay potential songs and then pretty much i'll listen to it a few times and I choreograph in my head, for, <laughs> to be honest, initially, and I'm, like, thinking about, okay, what body parts is this going to work out? How do I want to move to this? Is it going to be high, medium, low? Which part of the song and the beat do I want to choreograph to? And that's pretty much how it begins. Um, personally, um, I love to do power soca at least once in every class, but usually it's, like, three times. Um <laughs> Because I just feel like it allows you to release your stress, Mm -hmm. let go. You know, a lot of them have, like, screaming in it. So you just get to, ah, and just, like, you know, let it go. And then I make sure that the moves kind of coincide with allowing you to release. And um, then, you know, wind down, do some compa, maybe some Afro beats or some slow, you know, some slow soca, some Patrice. We'll see, Mm -hmm. you know, how we feel. And I just want to make sure that... I hit all different intensities, all different body parts within every class. That's and and that's what it's all about. And especially when you're trying to represent the culture. Yes. You know, whining as much as we might look at it from one aspect. If you just come in to enjoy yourself, it's one thing. But yes. whining has to teach you isolation. Yes. There's a lot that's <laughs> when you start analyzing it from the other end. You're exactly. like, Okay, it's working your core, you can catch yes. your waist. And when I tell you to go down low and stay there, that's when you realize, oh, this is, whining is not, is actually a workout. <laughs> Absolutely. Whining, um, I have, of course, you know, just through doing the show, and mm-hmm. I have a lot of Haitian friends, the whole Guya challenges. Yes. So Guya, I mean, I've, I have not participated, but okay. I've watched a few that I'm okay. just like, it's so different from Soka in that it aspect, is. because Soka, the women's, we lead. Yes. So the guy gets behind me. And if it's a really good turn up, you don't even really look to see who's right. behind. Right, it don't matter. <laughs> Whereas Buyad, you are like close, intimate. face to face, intimate. I'm like, I'm already for all this. Yeah, yes, <laughs> I'll watch it. I'm already. Yes, yes, it definitely is very intimate. It's something you have to be comfortable and know what you're going into. Yes. If you have never seen it before, and some, and you're. At a Haitian party or a Caribbean party, and then a Guyat song comes on, and a man comes up to you, you're just like, whoa. Exactly. It could be a little intimidating, but. Yes, yes, yes. So sometimes I play um, some Guyat songs, but without partners, um, and we just kind of just sway our body and just have a little session, you know, with ourselves. So I do incorporate that, and we do have that aspect, but a little just personal. I like that. You know. We'll hold that thought. We'll take a quick break. Okay. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel. And, of course, this is our very first show, 2020. Yes, Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you all have a great 2020. All the best to all of you watching. And, of course, Allie, of course, welcome. And welcome again. Thank and Happy you. New Year. So happy New Year. So we're in 2020, year. so we have a lot that's going on. Yes. And, you know, when you're coming off of 
you know, New Year's and the holidays, and you're eating so much. Everyone always has all these mm -hmm. resolutions and yes. fitness things that they want to do. So why not incorporate? I think fitness is the gr best combination of having a fat and you're working out, mm -hmm. um, and and get it all together. So someone like myself, I work out quite a bit. But what's been difficult for me, if you're at a, a mainstream gym, mm -hmm. is, you know, the best you're going to get closest to anything with flavor will be Zumba. Mm -hmm. And it's not even Zumba. It's not. <laughs> the instructor is not taking anything away, but mm -hmm. far the furthest thing away from knowing or really being of that culture. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you're like, okay... You just put on a playlist and you might see Soka in there. You might have whatever. Again, what does that really do for someone like you when you start seeing that and you could cater something better? Mm -hmm. Well, for me, I really just try to bring the Caribbean flavor to fitness authentically, mm -hmm. you know, and in a way where for us Caribbean people, we feel at home, and then for those who are non-Caribbean, they still feel at home and at, and welcome. Yes. You know, in, in fitness, our slogan is to sweat your culture. So wherever you're from, whether it's Ireland, whether it's Haiti, Jamaica, wherever you're from, represent where you're from, bring your flag, and may not play some Irish music, but you are still representing where you're from. You're sweating and you're having a great time. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though since there are so many mainstream gyms and class formats that may speak as though they're representing Soka and the Caribbean culture, that I want to make sure that those who know what Caribbean culture is, that we Absolutely. actually have somewhere to go. Absolutely. You know? Um, so you're very Long Island based at the moment. Yes, at the mm -hmm. moment. Um, Long Island doesn't have Caribbean culture like that. You know, in Brooklyn, you can find a Caribbean fitness class, you know, every corner. So I decided to launch in Long Island because I know that there are a lot of Caribbeans out there. Mm -hmm. And I wanted Caribbeans in Long Island to be able to not have to travel far to feel at home. Yep. Absolutely. And I think that's important because mm -hmm. Brooklyn's already so saturated. Mm -hmm. We have it. It's Caribbean. It's Caribbean Central. This, this is <laughs> the Caribbean capital. Yes. <laughs> so we're more Caribbean than the Caribbean. Yes. So I think it, it was a great marketing strategy mm -hmm. for you to do it that way. Mm -hmm. You're catching part of Queens. Mm -hmm. You'll definitely catch all of those in Long Island. Mm -hmm. And why not? You right. know, I think creating that and placing it there people will travel for something good mm -hmm. and as long as you really are staying to your your mission mm -hmm. of the authenticity and bringing that people will travel for it mm -hmm. it's like people travel for good food right right i've done it <laughs> <laughs> i've gotten in the car and go get that plate i have just because I have. it's good food. just for the food and then going back home <laughs> but um Honestly, where I am, so I have classes in, in Valley Stream mm -hmm. currently, so it's minutes into Queens. So like you said, I'm hitting that Queens market and Long Island and Nassau County. I have people who come from Suffolk, Eastern Long Island, and I have people who come from the Bronx and Brooklyn who are mm -hmm. still able to make it to my class. So I'm happy that I was able to at least pick a location that is feasible by people in all different areas. Of Absolutely. What has been some of the highlights wow. since you started 2019 so 2019 yes. is your year mm -hmm. and you're almost a full year in yes let's talk about this year okay so um i would say the first highlight um was my first birthday party request it um was an honor because she had only been in my class one time so for her to, to just get her first dose of fitness and say, wow, this is how I want to celebrate my life with my closest friends and family. That was an honor for me. And, um, so how did that go? So describe kind of how yeah. that, how do you do a, well, a fitness I birthday party? Yeah, so I, I pretty much, I do market that I do uh, private parties, uh, birthday parties, corporate events, whichever celebration, just because whatever you want. Um, so pretty much how that goes is, it's fitness, but it's for you. If you want an hour and a half, you want two hours, we'll do that. If you have any song requests, we'll do that. It's personal to you. Um, 
but I'll bring the fitness vibes. I'll bring the fitness energy. I'll bring the flags. I'll bring all the props that we use, the routines, the intensity, mm. and the fun of fitness. But it's for a reason. So it's a little bit deeper, a little bit more meaningful because we're celebrating for a birthday. We're celebrating your life, you and know, be with our people who are our invite list, of course. Right. Exactly. So it's personal. Your closest friends and family. Sometimes they even want people from class, too, because we're a family. So it's it's amazing thing. That is really nice. I mm-hmm. think that kind of could be a, a nice add on to something like mm-hmm. a, an activity to do. Yes. As part of something. Mm-hmm. You know, you have a bunch of people over. You could do it. I, I definitely could see that as something to do. Yes, I've done several birthday parties. It's been a part of either it's just fitness and then they'll have a cake and we'll sing mm-hmm. happy birthday because I make sure that we shout out the birthday person. <laughs> so they get to go down the Soul Train line by themselves. We'll sing happy birthday. You know, definitely want to make sure that everyone, the birthday person feels special. Um, I've also had birthday party events where we'll do fitness and then we'll also be a part of other activities as well. So I just love the creativity of everyone and the flexibility that you feel as though fitness can be incorporated into your celebration. I love that. Yes. I, my wheels are turning. I'm like, <laughs> okay, is there a way I can like yes, there get fitness is. into all this goodness? Yes. And um, so, so just to continue with the highlights, um, in in that birthday class and also in one of my earlier classes, I've had people come to me and they told me like, wow, I actually just uh, finished my chemotherapy and I am a wow. recent, you know, cancer survivor. And this is the first time that I've worked out since. And, you know, I'm here with my friends and family and I, they're, I'm just so thankful for you for allowing me to be here and work out and have fun in a way that I haven't in a long time. That, you know? that must be so amazing. Oh, my God. I wanted to cry. I but did that cry gives you <laughs> that little bit of, this is why I'm doing this. Exactly. I would have never thought that my passion would bring joy or heal someone in that way. Absolutely. Yes. And That's then, great. Well, hold that thought. Okay. Quick break. We'll be right back. <laughs> You're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. back you're watching beyond focus tv i'm lydia patel to ali why don't we continue with some of the highlights because it's 2019 well that was 2019 we're 2020 now but Mm -hmm. recapping your 2019 yes so um you know i've worked with nonprofit organizations fitness leagues and fitness festivals just to collaborate and just spread that joy and of health and wellness overall um i also was featured on abc7 Oh, wow. Yes. So Congratulations. That, thank you. So that was awesome. And um, the journalist, she joined us in class as well. So it was nice. That was her first time. And she really good, got heads in. And she killed the Soul Train line. She dropped it like it was hot and came back up. Like <laughs> I was like, yes. <laughs> um, but that was pretty much like the most recent highlight. And then now I'm here with you guys at Beyond Focus TV. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity. So I am adding that to my career highlights for sure. Absolutely. Um, But of course, with all highlights, there's challenges. So what have, as a new business owner Mm -hmm. and doing this, so it's no longer just a passion or hobby. This is what you do. This is a big part of your life now. Absolutely. What have you learned um, from some of those little potential pitfalls? I've learned to push fear and doubt aside and just keep going because you never know who you're touching, you know, who you're affecting. Um, I would say that consistency is something that I've learned to just keep going, stay consistent. Um, It's very difficult to accommodate everyone's schedule and their preferred location. So I try to be central. I'm currently adding a second location um, to hopefully appease other people and in, in their preferred location. Um, so I'm learning as I go, and I'm just trying to keep 
taking suggestions, listen to my customers' feedbacks and their suggestions and what their their needs are, but also understanding that I have to make sure that it's a great business decision as well. Of course, you know, a lot of times, you know, even with us here at Beyond Focus, oh, you should be on here, you should pop up at this event, but mm-hmm. they don't understand production and the cost mm-hmm. and everything. Does it make sense mm-hmm. to do it? So. Long Island so big, right. people might have requests for you all over. Yes. Is it feasible for right. you to go out there? Right. Unless they rally up enough people, f- there has to be a real demand Absolutely. for you to go out there. Absolutely. So that makes total sense. Mm-hmm. And, I, and it's understandable. You're already on the island. Right. That's a big plus. Yes. You're representing for us out there. Yes. Diversity, culture. Because <laughs> we know it's not the most diverse. <laughs> but, but we're there. That's why I was like, I know that my people are here, Mm -hmm. just, and I'm bringing it home for us. Yeah. You know? That's, that's amazing. So social media, how Mm -hmm. has that played into your business and getting recruiting and getting new clients? So social media is really an integral part of business nowadays. And honestly, I haven't paid for any sponsored posts. It's just been social media and word of mouth. And Mm -hmm. I find that to be a blessing, but social media is absolutely a powerful tool if you use it correctly. Absolutely. You know, that's actually how, um, the ABC seven journalist found me. She found me on Facebook and then checked out my video, checked out the Instagram and she said, wow, this looks like fun. Let me reach out to her. Mm -hmm. So, um, I use social media wisely. It's just, I have so much great content sometimes a little. It can be a bit overwhelming uh, because I don't want to share too much. I want to make sure that, you know, you know, at this day and age, you share too much, people don't pay attention. Right. And of course, you also want to make sure that there's still, you give a reason to come. Yes. Because if they could basically sit there and stream your class live, they don't need to get there. But you want to tease just enough. Give them enough for them to be interested and, yes and but enough for them to want to come out absolutely and i love you'll see if you come to a fitness class i love the element of surprise i love that people feel like oh i didn't know this was gonna happen yeah that's right because <laughs> <laughs> it's choreographed in your head <laughs> and yeah. that's and that's probably the best part how do we get in contact with you okay so um i'm available on all social media pr- platforms facebook is fitness f-e-t-e-n-e-s-s I'm also on Twitter um, at Fetness as well, F-E-T-E-N-E-S-S. And Instagram is a little bit different at F-E-T-E-N-E-S-S underscore. And um, contact uh, via email at info at fetness.com. Okay, great. So the typical social media Mm -hmm. posts, uh, well, handles, they can reach out to you, check out your page. They can message me. I do answer. And, of course, private classes. What about... If someone's getting ready, I, I call it a carnival boot camp. Okay. A little carnival refresher. You know, yes. you might be going away. Do you offer anything like that? If a couple oh, of people come together and they just want to, you know, improve their whining skills a little bit. Absolutely. Definitely offer one-on-one classes, small group classes. Yep. Whatever the preference is, fitness will provide it. There's no limitations, no, no rules, whatever is needed. That's great. Mm -hmm. You know, that really, I think, is going to set you apart from a lot of the other brands where it's just strictly choreography versus this is still a workout. But then you have that one-on-one element or small group, which a lot of people kind of like that. Mm -hmm. You know, they might want to get two, three girlfriends. Yes. And, you know, you guys just kind of improve whether some people might want to twerk some right. people might want to you know whatever mm-hmm. you want to design i'm sure you'll be able to to set that up and and have that absolutely what long term being 2020 now yes what do you think is the ultimate one thing that you would love to see fitness achieve wow well, i would like to add more class formats under the fitness umbrella so stay tuned we're bringing caribbean culture in different ways in mm-hmm. fitness in 2020 Wow, I'm kind of curious because our culture goes the dancing, the ranges of the dancing mm-hmm. itself, even just on the Afrobeat section, mm-hmm. you know, that's one aspect. And then, you know, shout out to Grenada, you know, Ooh. the Jab Jab people. Yes. Listen, I love that Jab Jab Me music. Too. That just is, puts you in like another zone. Oh my gosh, seriously. And power Soka, you mm-hmm. know, I'm, I don't know how many times I played Family this year. Oh, yes. That's, that's, <laughs> That's in every dance yeah. class. Mm-hmm. 
but that gets your heart. That that song's like 100 beats per minute. Yes, absolutely. That's an intense one. So that's a secret that's out the bag. Femme of course, we do that in fitness. Um, it's the killer run with it. <sighs> Definitely do that. This year's Soka was <sighs> amazing. I think 2019 had so many so good songs. many hits. I mean, it was shout out to all the artists. Yes. If you guys are listening or get to see mm-hmm. this, shout out to all of you. I mean, 2019, they killed it. And I'm hoping absolutely. this year, next month, Carnival 2020. I need to hear some more tracks. Yes. Looking forward to it, but I think I will be doing a fitness class. Yay! Come so I'll, join I'll us. come out and join you, and I think it'll be great. Well, I thank you very much for coming, and thank we're looking for forward having to having you back again. Thank awesome. you. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, you can send us an email at info at beyondfocusedmedia.com. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll be back again next week. Same time, same place you're watching Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback. Did we blunder? Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusedmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you. We really look forward to hearing.